What does Moses have in common with Publilius Cyrus, Benjamin Franklin, and Henrik Ibsen? Moses was the man who brought down the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai and authored the Torah, which makes up the first five books of the Bible. He lived 3,400 years ago, around 1400 BC. Publilius Cyrus was a Syrian from Antioch that lived approximately 1400 years later during the domination of the Roman Empire. He was brought to Rome as a slave, where over time he earned the trust of his master, and later he was able to earn his freedom. He went on to become a widely respected writer of Latin proverbs and even entertained Caesar enough to be awarded winner of a contest. Benjamin Franklin is one of the most well-known founding fathers, one of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence, who is also a prolific inventor and one of the great political philosophers of the 1700s. And Henrik Ibsen was a Norwegian playwright and director who pushed boundaries, eventually becoming one of the most influential of his kind through most of the 1800s and often referred to as the best playwright since Shakespeare. He was also a traditional anarchist who believed in the importance of individual sovereignty over the importance of the state. These men all wrote about debt. Separated by hundreds or thousands of years, they wrote words that would ring true today. Ibsen said that home life ceases to be free and beautiful as soon as it is founded on borrowing and debt. Franklin said that many a man thinks he is buying pleasure when in reality he's selling himself to it. Cyrus, a former slave, said that debt is the slavery of the free. And Moses, in an effort to create government for the Jews he was leading was working to establish a Jewish tradition that at the end of every seven years, borrowers would be granted a release of their debts. How is it possible that men of such different origins, nationalities, religions, and cultures could all land at basically the same position on debt? Christians and Jews believe that Moses was writing words inspired by God. But even if you take a secular view that he was just voicing his opinion on how to best establish a local government, the point still holds. These four men lived impactful, transformative lives that basically came to the same conclusion. I think it's because sometimes there are timeless principles that are greater than any one individual. These principles will be tested every generation. They will be mocked. They will be cast aside and disregarded by many. But I believe that the handling of money is subject to certain laws just like the law of gravity and there's nothing new under the sun when it comes to money. So here are the four timeless principles of debt-free living inspired by these men and others like them that remembered to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to learn all things money. All right, the first is that we must get out ahead of debt. Franklin's saying that you think you're buying pleasure, but you're really selling yourself to it. This means we think it's a fair trade, and so we don't think ahead. This makes it a planning problem. President Eisenhower said the plans are nothing, planning is everything. This is the man who is the supreme commander of the troops invading France on D-Day. We could all learn something from him and his preparation for the climax of World War II. He was responsible for coordinating 7,000 ships, 195,000 naval personnel from eight different countries, all landing on the beaches of a single country in one day. Those were his job responsibilities, but we can't come up with a plan to save money for a rainy day. So much debt is the result of an immediate need or want hitting us when we're unprepared because we've failed to plan. I need a car, but I don't have the cash, so I'll just borrow. I got sick and the medical bills are piling up. Christmas is here, but the hot water heater just went out. I'll put it on the credit card. I got laid off and I can't make rent. These are things that are not even necessarily our fault. We didn't design the hot water heater to go bad at the absolute worst time. We didn't choose to get sick or laid off, and maybe we don't live in an area where we can get around without a car. However, not having an emergency fund set up to cover sudden medical bills or a busted water heater is our responsibility. If we know our clunker car isn't going to make it another two years, we need to start saving now. This requires planning and thinking ahead. Next is to live on less than you make. A home with solid finances is a home that is peaceful. And I think that's what Henrik Ibsen was saying when he said that home life ceases to be free and beautiful as soon as it is founded on borrowing and debt. Home should be peaceful. It should be free. And yet millions of Americans are in financial turmoil because of debt. George Washington said we must consult our means rather than our wishes. Basically know our income, budget accordingly, and don't be controlled by our impulses. I know I'm an old soul and the curmudgeon in me is strong. It's hard for me to not roll my eyes and say kids these days, so I'll try to avoid that cliche. Here in Virginia, we have standardized testing for the main subjects taught in high school, but no mandatory teaching on financial literacy, and most high schools don't even have voluntary courses you can take on learning about the basics of finances. So if our parents don't teach us, we grow up knowing 
nothing about how to make plans with money. It starts with creating and following a budget and diligently managing our cash flow. I remember as a kid watching my mom track expenses on this huge green accounting ledger. She was saving all her receipts and would enter them into this ledger and she was meticulous about it. She was setting an example for me that I didn't appreciate at the time, but I do now. I remember asking about buying certain things and she and my dad would say yes or no depending on whether they could budget for it. I will forever be grateful for this lesson they taught me, but how many of us had that model? Another important lesson to learn here is that although it worked for her, I tried doing a budget on that huge green accounting ledger when I was going out on my own, but with little success. I much prefer tracking things online. This was nearly 20 years ago, so there aren't as many programs out there. Now we have a ton of budgeting apps. I've had great success with every dollar. Use whatever you prefer. I have no skin in this game, but know your income, know what you spend, and hopefully you can leverage what's left over to build wealth. Next is to get out of debt. When Publilius Sirius said that debt is the slavery of the free, he was able to speak with experience. Having lost his freedom, taken into captivity, only to later earn his freedom, he could speak with authority on what freedom really means. For him to say that debt is a form of slavery for free people is extremely powerful. Dave Ramsey says that debt is normal, be weird. If you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, he's the author of many books about getting out of debt and how to manage your personal finances. Millions tune into his radio station on a weekly basis and his company, Ramsey Solutions, has helped millions get out of debt through Financial Peace University. He gets millions of views on his YouTube channel as well. The man knows a thing or two about getting out of debt. So why is Dave Ramsey so influential in the personal finance space? I think it's because his approach is so contrary to our modern day culture of spend first and ask questions later. If you've ever heard Dave talk about getting gazelle intense about getting out of debt, he's referencing how whenever you watch a nature channel and you see a lion hunting a gazelle, the gazelle moves with such intensity and speed because they're literally running for their life. This is the picture that he wants to illustrate for how you should behave in trying to get out of debt. Debt is not your friend. Run away from it as though you're running for your life. So let's say you're ready to get out of debt. Where do you start? I have another video you should check out about how to do the debt snowball. You list your debts from smallest to largest and you work your way through each debt until you're debt free. It sounds simple enough, but simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. My wife and I had six figures in debt. It took us a few years of extreme discipline to get out of debt. We started with some small credit cards and then moved on to both of our cars and then we started taking good sized chunks out of our 70,000 in student loans. Month after month we stayed disciplined, delaying any kind of gratification and eventually we were able to eliminate all debt outside of our home. Getting out of debt is hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's hard because consumer debt represents something in our life that we couldn't afford. We had to go above and beyond the normal baseline to pay off the debt and it's hard to go beyond what is normal. But according to Dave Ramsey, we should strive to be weird. Okay, and this last one is to stay out of debt. When Moses was leading the Jews and they were establishing a government, they knew that it was best to stay out of debt, but that there might be some instances where debt would play a role. But they never intended it to be 10 year camel payments or 30 year tent payments. They set a max of seven years and then debt had to be forgiven. This was based on the belief that debt was not good for a society and that a clean slate was needed. This also encouraged prudence on those lending. If the loan couldn't be satisfied in seven years, the lenders were going to lose any remaining principal. When you get a fresh start, such as what happens when you pay off your debts, your slate is wiped clean. Don't go back into debt. It's extremely easy to obtain debt, but every dollar paid to a bank is a dollar you're robbing your future self with interest. If you're thinking about debt as a way of life and an integral part of your future, that's what you're going to pursue. I would encourage you to consider complete rejection of debt entirely. Once you rid yourself of it, be done with it forever. All right, folks, thanks for spending time with me today. If you like this video, check out some of my others on debt and investing. Until next time.